On the footy field, Daniel was fearless and that was his undoing. His life was dramatically and violently cut short. His family couldn't understand why or how he lost his way. But now science is providing answers. I would never have expected something like that from my brother. He's shooting the police. I'm gonna go, I'm scared. Oh my God. Oh my God. To know what that, I call it the filthy disease, does to the brain, it, it's really torture to them. It really oh is. We got a problem here. We got a problem. The more I look, the more I find. And at this stage, we don't know how big this problem is. Daniel King had become a madman by the time he was shot dead by police. He was ruled by a brain disease which could have been prevented. His family says the real Daniel was a loving son to Sandra, protective brother to Megan and talented at sport. He was very thoughtful, very selfless. Um, everything was about someone else and about getting somewhere better. He was nine when he started playing rugby league always played wing or played fullback, but very quick off the mark and a good team player actually, a very good team player. But Sandra wasn't keen on it being his future. I didn't want him to play rugby league because Daniel was um, a fabulous cricketer. Megan remembers her brother getting concussed a lot. The time to recover after each head injury took longer um, and longer. It's entertaining, it's great to watch, it's a good family day up, but there was always like a pit in your stomach. What if they, they do get injured? Among the worst, this incident at a grand final when Daniel was told to take out an opposition prop. Dominic! We got a problem here, we got a problem. He was unconscious for 90 seconds. He said, Mum, I didn't even have any idea what I was doing. I only knew I was playing football. He said, I didn't even have to look at my jersey. I didn't even know what side I was playing on. When he was 23, after 13 years of playing rugby league, Daniel copped a career-ending blow. The guy's shoulder hit Daniel in the neck. So he was sat out for the rest of the game, given two Panadols, and at the end of the game, sent home. That night, Sandra took him to hospital and a few days later, doctors scanned his brain. It came back to show that he'd had a significant bleed on the brain and that he'd had a stroke. What was the culture like at the club? He would just do whatever was asked of him because he wanted to play great. You don't play a sport at that level unless you want to win, but it costs people their lives. Over the next decade, Daniel's family says he lost control over his mind and personality and began using drugs. The pain and the suffering, um, not being able to be the father that he wanted to be because of his anger. I think he did really try and he recognised that he wasn't himself and then he decided that he couldn't live anymore. On October 2, 2019, Daniel was on drugs and armed with a shotgun when he opened fire at his ex-lover's home and then St Mary's and Penrith police stations in Sydney's west, where he was eventually killed by police, shot 24 times. He's shooting the police. I've got to go. I'm scared. Obviously very sad. After he died, his family was contacted by Associate Professor Michael Buckland, director of the Australian Sports Brain Bank, who examined Daniel's brain and discovered he had chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, which develops from repetitive head impacts. It's the hundreds, if not thousands of these injuries, particularly in young brains, that seem to lay the foundation for this degenerative brain disease. Most of the people with CTE, that when it declares itself when they're young, 
Uh, they often present with mental health-like problems, so depression, anxiety, aggression, impulsivity, uh, drug and alcohol abuse. Do you think CT was to blame for Daniel's behaviour? I have no doubt that his behaviour on that night was driven primarily by his brain disease. And I think it's a credit to him, I have to say. In the police report to the coroner, the police said that he actually had opportunities for kill shots and he didn't take them. How did you feel when you learned that he had CTE? Uh, it was quite bittersweet and it gave us a little bit of relief that it wasn't Daniel that was making those choices. He, his brain had been taken over. Dr Buckland has spent the last six years examining brains of men and women who played contact sports like rugby league, rugby union and AFL. I'm surprised that we keep seeing it so frequently in our donated brains. I just don't know how big this problem is, but it does worry me that it's a lot bigger than anyone currently appreciates. Recently, a landmark international study between the University of Glasgow, Boston University and the University of Sydney found there was a link between the length of a rugby union career and the risk of CTE. It looked at the results of 31 post-mortem brain examinations of former players and found CTE in 68% of them. It also discovered that each extra year of playing the sport added a 14% risk of developing the brain disease. I am firmly convinced that we should not have full contact versions of these sports uh, for children. They need to understand that it's not just about winning that game because there's a, there's a lot of games after that to win. Um, just be a bit respectful of human life. It really is a dreadful disease and it makes you wonder how many deaths it may have contributed to. Let's hope something positive can come from Daniel's death.